Hello everyone and welcome back. Today, as you can see, we will be going over a brief history of ships named Enterprise. From sailing vessels, to aircraft carriers, to various spacecraft. Now, we are not going to be covering every example of the Enterprise in history, as this would be a very long video. However, we will be discussing some historically notable vessels. And we will start out with the Royal Navy which over the years has had 14 ships that carried the name HMS Enterprise, sometimes spelled with a Z instead of an S. The first one I could find was a 24-gun frigate from approximately 1705. This was a captured French ship that indeed had the French version of the name Enterprise. Over the years, the Royal Navy had several sailing ships as well as other more modern vessels named Enterprise. Leading up to the current day, we're a Echo class survey vessel in service since 2002. Is currently serving the Royal Navy under the name HMS Enterprise. From here, we will move on to the United States Navy, or to be exact, for the first example, the Continental Navy, which is the name of the uh, naval forces during the Revolutionary War. So therefore, the, historically, the first USS Enterprise, as far as I can tell, was a sloop of war captured by the Americans from the British in 1775. This was the first of eight ships that have carried the name USS Enterprise for the, either the Continental or the U.S. Navy. Another notable USS Enterprise was the Yorktown-class aircraft carrier that served during World War II. The ship earned 20 battle stars, making it the most decorated U.S. ship of the war. And it was also this particular enterprise that was the most direct influence on Gene Roddenberry selecting the name for his show. Another noteworthy enterprise in the U.S. Navy was a newer version of the aircraft carrier, in this case considered Enterprise Class because she was the only ship of her class. She was also the first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. The USS Enterprise, CVN-65, served the U.S. Navy for over 50 years. However, she was officially decommissioned a few years ago. However, the ninth ship, USS Enterprise, is currently under construction. It will be another nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. In this case, the Gerald R-4 class it is planned for launch in about 2028. From here, we'll move on to something a little bit more obscure, but I still think it's interesting that the Enterprise name is in this particular area as well, namely in airships. During the U.S. Civil War, the Union utilized a gas-inflated balloon named Enterprise for reconnaissance purposes. And also, during World War II, the U.S. Navy pressed into service a number of Goodyear blimps, one of which was designated as L-5 and was named Enterprise. This uh, airship was reacquired by Goodyear after the war. From here we'll move on to spacecraft named Enterprise, starting with NASA. First we have the OV-101, which was the first example built of the Space Shuttle Orbiter. This ship served as a prototype conducting atmospheric tests in 1977 although it never flew in space. Another interesting thing I found was the following concept ship which was dubbed the IXS Enterprise. NASA researchers are apparently working on a design for a ship like this which includes an Alcubierre drive which has some scientific principles in common with the warp drive we see in Star Trek. It was announced in 2013. It's interesting to note that it includes a ring in its design, which is similar to the following design during the United Earth period, designated as the XCV-330. This following ring ship, which was named Enterprise, was first seen in the motion picture as an image on the uh, Enterprise lineage seen in the rec room. However, we know very little about what this ship did or what events it was involved in. However, we can come up with an approximate date of service as the early 22nd century, 
as an image of this ship was also seen in the Enterprise episode First Flight in the 602 Club. Which brings us to the NX-01 Enterprise, which was launched in 2151 as Earth's first Warp 5 starship. It served the United Earth Starfleet for about 10 years. Moving on to our next period under the Starfleet as part of the Federation, we have the classic Constitution class Starship Enterprise, NCC-1701, which served as the flagship of the Federation for about 40 years in the mid to late 23rd century. She was followed by the Enterprise A, which was a refit Constitution class, which served until her decommissioning in 2293. Very soon after the decommissioning of the Enterprise A, we saw the launch of the Enterprise B, which is a refit Excelsior class starship. Now, we don't know very much about the Enterprise B, other than what we saw of her in the movie Star Trek Generations. Likewise, the next Enterprise, which is an ambassador class starship, we know very little about her exploits other than how she was lost in 2344 in a battle with the Romulans. Her loss, however, leading to an important growth of the development of the relations between the Federation and the Klingons. So we have an approximate 50 year period where we don't know much about the history of the Enterprise. However, what we do know more is the time period of the Enterprise D, which is a galaxy class starship that served as the flagship of the Federation from about 2363 to 2371. And after the loss of the Enterprise D and Star Trek Generations, the following year the Sovereign class Enterprise E was launched, and we don't know yet how long her period of service was. From here we'll move on to a couple of possible future Enterprises. Uh, one of them is the Enterprise F, which is an Odyssey class starship that was seen in the game Star Trek Online, which means this one is not actually canon. However, the Odyssey class did show up in the Picard prequel comic as a different starship. So I would say it's not out of the question that this Enterprise could show up in a future Star Trek show. Finally, we have the Enterprise J, which is a universe class starship that will presumably serve the Federation in the 26th century. Captain Archer saw the inside of the Enterprise J when Daniels brought him to the future in the Enterprise episode Azadi Prime. Although changes to the timeline might mean that this design could never come to pass. That about wraps up our coverage of the history of the Enterprise for today. Did I miss any important ships? I welcome any comments or suggestions down below. I thank you for joining us again, and I hope you have a blessed day.